Okay, so I've been racking my brain lately, trying to remember something. Something I've been asking myself ever since I began working on this podcast. When did I hear about translation for the very first time? I'm sure I was confronted with the idea of translation at some point, but that moment, whenever it was, obviously didn't leave a mark on my neurons. Or perhaps I killed that gray cell off in college. What I do remember is the first time I considered becoming a translator, of making a career out of translation. Strangely enough, it was months after I began working as a translator. No, don't hit rewind. You heard right. I was 25, about to graduate with a bachelor's degree in German studies and international affairs, and interning as a translator, a job that came to me through a professor. I remember thinking, you know, my plan is to go to Washington and change the world, don't work out, I can fall back on this translation thing. When I look back now, that moment was prophetic. Welcome to the ATA Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Baird, and you're listening to Episode 11 the ATA School Outreach Program. Each month on the podcast, we bring you news and insights from the American Translators Association. Today, we're going to talk about how you can inspire and inform the next generation through the ATA School Outreach Program. I've got to add one more little anecdote here. I remember being quite intrigued by foreign languages the first time I really encountered them. And that was my eighth grade Spanish class. And I was good at it. I aced Spanish all through high school. I really enjoyed it. So I sometimes wonder why my Spanish teacher or my high school guidance counselor never mentioned translation to me as a potential career. And I wonder if my path to translation would have been different had I known back then what a rewarding profession it really is. Joining me today to talk about the ATA School Outreach Program is Birgit fossele Brema. Birgit is a member of the ATA School Outreach Committee, and she also won the School Outreach Award in 2012, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. She's an English to German freelance translator based in Andernach, Germany. Birgit, nice to be speaking with you today. Hi, Matt. Thanks for inviting me today. You bet. Really, thank you for joining. Now, Let's get right into it. What inspired you to get involved in ATA School Outreach? Now, Matt, you started with an anecdote. Can I start with an anecdote as well? Yeah, sure. Please do. You know, I have the same experience as you had. No language teacher pointed out to me that there is a career option in translation and interpretation. And it was actually a chemistry teacher who in a higher grade dropped the line um, that Russian into German translators made a mint with chemistry students. Mm -hmm. And I think at his time when he was at university, uh, a lot of resources, resources were in Russian. And as normal German students didn't understand and speak Russian, uh, they had to rely on translators to get their resources translated. And this, yes, I thought so too. And this is actually what got me into Russian. And Russian is still today one of the languages I work with. But to come back to ATA and the school outreach program, um, 
at my time, I didn't in school, I didn't get a lot of information on careers. And I think it is important that students do get information on careers and especially firsthand information. And uh, while I was still in the United States, I had been following the school outreach program for quite a while. And I thought, what a neat program. You do a school outreach presentation and you get a chance at winning a free registration for the conference. Yes. How cool is that? But the decisive push to really get going, I received only once we had moved back to Germany. Okay. You know how it is uh, when you want to attend a conference in the United States and you have to cross the Atlantic. It means yes. you need more time. It means you have higher expenses. Um, so I skipped the conference in 2010 and I skipped 2011. But I was determined to go to San Diego in 2012. That was my big incentive to do the school outreach in 2012. It's a good reason. It's a good, it's a good motivator. Yes, and uh, I mustered up all my courage and uh, contacted the teacher and she invited me to do a presentation to her advanced English course, 12th grade students in Germany. Mm -hmm. And she was also the person who took the winning picture. And oh, here I was. <laughs> right. Yeah. You won it that ver the very first year you did a school outreach presentation was also the year that you won the award. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Let's, let's talk about the importance. Why is the ATA school outreach important? I didn't learn about translation in school. I mentioned that earlier. But don't kids nowadays learn it more? I am not sure about it. Uh, I know that German students certainly know that languages are important for their careers in general. But I'm not sure that teachers point out this possibility okay. of a career in translation and in interpretation. And you know, there's some other thing. Students like to hear from professionals talk about their profession because they have ex immediately they have the feeling that these people know what they are talking about. So I think it is still important to talk about our profession. Now, and what we want to do with it, we there are several things we want to achieve. We want to get young people interested in these career options. We want to give them first hand information what our job looks like. Okay. And what kind of skills they require. But we also want to talk about how we work and how interpreters work. What do we consider to be a good translation? What is a bad translation? And um, where are the limits of software apps that mm -hmm. are in everybody's use? And um, we also want to point out how much we as consumers rely on translations. Mm -hmm. And I think many students, they are not aware of it, that they use translations almost every day. So school outreach is actually a way of raising awareness just about the translation and interpreting professions. I mean, not everybody in the room that you're speaking to is going to become a translator, but there's potential that somebody in the room might be a future translation buyer and just sort of generally raising the awareness of our profession is a good thing. Yes, exactly. I agree. And uh, let me point some other situation that um, helped me last year uh, to explain what we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You remember 2015 where we had um, a big influx of refugees into Germany and uh, you can imagine that all of a sudden um, refugee languages were in big demand uh -huh. and um, uh, it was a great thing to talk to these young people and tell them and ask them, who would you trust more, a neutral, well-trained interpreter or a friend and competing asylum seeker? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And 
what would you what do you think what who is more suitable to translate or interpret a doctor patient talk um, uh, when it is a critical doctor patient talk and um, you are seriously ill is it better to use a well trained neutral interpreter or an underage child who is worried to death what's going to happen to her parent yeah that's really awesome that you've put it in these real life situations and you're right the refugee situation here in Germany is front and center and it's been something that's it's in the news almost every day for the last couple of years so that's something that these kids especially high school kids are really confronted with and then if you taking that context that they're already aware of and 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 um you know integrating translation into that uh, does that really do you feel like they they really respond to that message yes i did last year i really thought okay they understand that um uh interpreting and translation is something very important and that your life can depend on it or your future that's really powerful. That's a fantastic example of using current events to drive a point home. Now let's talk a little bit more about the program itself. We know it's about going into uh, into classrooms, telling kids about translation and interpreting. That, that much is in clear, but there's more to it. It's called a program. Why does ATA call it a program? Yeah, let me go a little bit into the history here. Um, the School outreach started at the end of the 90s, and um, this is when uh, members, ATM members, realized that many members actually went to classrooms and talked about kids, and uh, talked uh, about translation and interpreting. And they said, why do we not share and exchange the material we use? And so it started from there, and uh, little by little, um, the collection got bigger and bigger and now we have an entire section on the ATA website that is dedicated to school outreach. We have um, resources, we have um, tips on all sorts of situations, uh, we have a great we have great motivation and I think our website now covers all aspects of a school outreach presentation. Okay. And there is even a contest to motivate members as I mentioned at the beginning. Yes, yes. We're going to talk about the contest a little later because I'm sure some of our listeners will want to know the details. Um, but first, you it sounds like there's that this kit you just mentioned really walks you through the process so let's do that say i've decided i'm ready to go give a presentation i want to go talk to a school what's the first step the very first step is that you decide on the school you want to go to you think about the age group group you want to present to um, you find an opportunity where can you at what opportunity can you go and present and you need to talk to a teacher and get an invitation to speak. We call that getting the gig. And some advice, make it as easy for yourself as possible and don't be discouraged if, in, if it doesn't work out at your first attempt. I noticed that sometimes in schools, things just take their time and sometimes teachers call back and say, you know, somebody canceled, would you like to jump in? That's great advice. You know, I for one get really nervous when I start to speak in front of people and I think there's a lot of others out there like me, but I believe the kit has tips for, for that as well, doesn't it? It does. And I agree with you. It makes you very nervous when you just do not have the practice of public speaking. Um, but uh, there are speaking tips on the um, internet and just relax. You know, everybody is nervous and uh, just reassure yourself. Think about it that you are the expert and Another thing, students usually love a change in curriculum, so 
you don't have to make the students work. They will just have to listen to you. <laughs> That's a great point. And um, for all other things, uh, read the speaking tips on the website. They really helped. I followed them step by step and um, I think they do work. I think something that we that's something we can't stress enough. Um, the part you just said about being an expert, that when you go and talk to these kids, that's that you really are coming in as an expert in the field, and I think that's going to interest them. And I love what you just mentioned. Something I haven't even thought about is that the kids are just excited. They don't have to do their regular, you know, their regular curriculum, their regular assignments. It's something different from their everyday classroom experience. And mm -hmm. thinking back to my own experience as a as a student in high school, whenever there was a guest speaker. Um, I remember those were moments when uh, you were more excited or more interested. You paid a little more attention than maybe you did to your teacher. Uh, so that's something that everybody should keep in mind when they're going, uh, definitely going to talk to a school, is that the experience you're giving, you're giving the students also an, ex uh, an, an extra experience that they wouldn't uh, get to have in their normal, normal curriculum. Exactly. Now, Birgit, the program and the, the kit online which, by the way, I should mention, all of these resources we're talking about are downloadable and they're on the website. And we will put a link to the website in the in the podcast notes on the ATA at the ATA at ATA excuse me atanet.org. So you'll be able to find all those there. But the program does provide some other resources. Can you tell us uh, about those as well? Yes, um, there is a big part of the website are ready-made presentations that our members have contributed. The presentations also include activities and tips for each age group. Um, and so as they have been handed in by our fellow ATA members, you can trust them. They have been tried and tested. And I'd like to add also that we recently updated the website. Uh, we have taken off all the material and included new presentations um, and we also tried to rearrange the information to make it easier to find. Okay. So take the time to browse through the website and have a look at the resources that are there. Okay, now I know some listeners have been waiting for this moment. Let's talk about the contest because it, it really is an incentive. What it, What is that all about? Tell us a little more about it. Um, now the contest is a picture contest. What we okay. want is that um, once you have done a presentation, um, have somebody take your picture while you're at school and uh, send us in your picture. We select a contest winner every year. And uh, if you win the contest, you get a free registration to the annual conference. We also feature the winner of the contest in a Chronicle article every year. So uh, winning the contest is also connected to publicity. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You get your name out there a little bit in addition to free registration to the conference. Exactly. Now you won in 2012. We talked about that earlier. It was your very first, uh, very first presentation. Tell our listeners what's what's the secret. Why don't you re reveal your secrets for me? What's the secret to submitting a winning entry? Let's say just an ounce of good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I have to say it's really the picture only that counts. Okay. Uh, you have to follow our picture guidelines, which means we have to see from the picture that you were talking about translation or interpreting. Um, your picture must show, show yourself and a student or several students. Okay. We also like to see smiles and enthusiasm. And something very important, it has to be a crisp shot well lit and people have to be in focus. Okay. Of course, all the contest guidelines are on our website. What about some personal tips? Uh, 
ask a person with a knack of photography to take the picture. Okay, that's good advice. You cannot be sure that a teacher is able to handle your camera mm -hmm. or has a talent for it. Another piece of advice, you know, a school has its own rhythm. So mm -hmm. let the teacher know ahead of time that you want to take a picture so that he or she knows how to work it in. Okay. And think about how to stage the picture ahead of time. Do not leave it um, to ha. <laughs> yeah, to chance. Um... Exactly. <laughs> Do not leave it to chance. Nicht im Zufall überlassen. Do not leave it to chance. Do not leave it to chance. Do you actually suggest um, visiting the classroom in advance where you're going to give the give your talk? Not necessarily, but it is good to talk to the teacher about the class mm -hmm. and um, get a few details, what they have been talking about lately, so that you have connecting points. Mm -hmm. Now, do I have to take a photo and submit an entry if I want to go speak at a school? No, not at all. Uh, many of our members go to school, go to schools on a regular basis almost every year, and they unfortunately never send in pictures. Um, but you know, we really would love to hear about your experience. And um, so send us an email. And we also developed a story sec section on the website. And we encourage our members who did presentations uh, to write a story for us, what their experience was like. And uh, we'd be glad to publish that story on our school outreach website. Yeah, that's great. It's kind of like collecting best practices. And it also gives those members who don't necessarily want to take a picture or be you know, involved in the contest to also contribute and, and share what they're doing. Uh, with everybody because I think the more stories people would see online that would also encourage others to do it as well don't you think yes exactly it's about um, encouraging other members to do that and it's also when you see oh he used that activity that is great I could do that too yes. you know sometimes you just don't um, you cannot think of what can I do what is good, what is not so good. And um, so it's nice to read how others did it. And uh, believe me, there are some great ideas in these stories. Does school outreach qualify for ATA continuing education points? Yes, actually it does. Each full hour of presentation earns you two CE points. And there is a maximum of six points during the three year reporting period. So you could give one every year and earn six points uh, toward your 20 continuing education points. Exactly. Uh, let me add really quickly to listeners out there, in case you don't already know, ATA certified translators are required to earn 20 continuing education points every three years. There really are a lot of reasons to do this uh, from our conversation and from what I've read online, not, not least of which is telling the next generation about our professions. Now, we're coming to the, to the end of the podcast here, but before we do, I want you to sort of pull out your ed elevator speech for me, okay? Say you've got 30 seconds, you're talking to somebody about school outreach, they're kind of on the fence, what would you say to them? You know, we all need a challenge from time to time. And like kids, we are very proud when we mastered a new skill. And presenting to kids and students is a very unique experience. You have instant rewards, mm -hmm. smiles, nodding heads versus rewards from translation customers received thank you or even no response at all. <laughs> Plus many students have never heard of uh, TNYI or considered it as a real career option. Mm -hmm. And they will be thank you, thankful for your information. And think about this. We all love to talk about translation and interpretation. If you think of our very noisy conferences. Yeah. So let us use this opportunity to set this picture straight. 
Well, I totally agree, and I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm really sold on, on the program. Would you like to share anything else about school outreach or from your own personal experience? Yes, my next school outreach presentation is coming up. It's in two weeks from now. And my goal is this year to try something new, for example, an interpretation exercise. Okay. I also look forward to more school outreach stories on the website. And I look forward to lots of more contest entries. Matt, when will you be doing your first school outreach presentation? I was hoping you weren't going to answer, ask me that question because uh, if you did and you've done it, you're going to out me. Um, I have not given one. Uh, it's something that's been on my radar uh, for a while and I'd really, really like to do it. Um, but I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Is that a good excuse? The one-year-old, yes. The three-year-old, I'm not so sure. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, then I guess sometime in the next couple of years, I'm going to have to get one under my belt. And uh, and I don't even have any hurdles because uh, one of my best friends is an English teacher here in Germany, so I even have direct access. So it's all about getting motivated and, uh, and just uh, getting out there and doing it. And I think that's sometimes the biggest hurdle because you, you did it once and now you're basically doing it every year. And uh, I think I, I need, I need to, to get over that hurdle as well. And then I would love uh, to do it on an annual basis. That sounds good, Matt. All right, well, Birgit, you are a great motivator. You're obviously very passionate about the program, and it's nice to hear from somebody who's really out there and really doing it. Thank you so much uh, for telling us about the program today, for joining me. Uh, it was really great talking with you. Thank you. People, don't be like me. Get out there and spread the word about translation and interpreting. Now that you're in the know, head over to ATA's website, atanet.org, for all the details, stories, and materials you need. Click on Resources and then School Outreach Program. And if you're still on the fence about this, there's a bit of inspiration waiting for you at the very end of the podcast. But before we get to that, if you're a first-time listener, make sure you check out our past episodes. We've talked about a lot of different things. The computerized ATA certification exam, ATA webinars, and annual conferences. We've even taken you inside the ATA boardroom. You'll find them all on ATA's website. There you can subscribe via iTunes, Google Play, or Tuned In or you can add us to your favorite RSS feed. And please leave a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. The ATA podcast is still relatively new and we need your help to get the word out. So tell your colleagues, tell your friends about us, post and tweet your hearts out. And here's a novel idea, put a link to us on your website. While you're at it, be sure to follow ATA on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Finally, we'd really love to hear from you. Please write me and let me know what you think of the podcast or send me your ideas for a future episode. Write to me at podcast at atanet.org. Episode 11 was produced by myself with support from Mary David and Rashan Pacarel from ATA headquarters. Very special thanks to Birgit for her input and of course for joining me. Now here's an inspirational clip to send you on your way. It's from ATA's YouTube video on school outreach. Thanks again for tuning in everyone. We'll see you next month. Well, the School Outreach Program is designed to solve a problem. As we know, translation and interpreting are vibrant and growing professions, and they're doing well even in the middle of an economic downturn. 
but a lot of teachers and parents still are not aware of these professions. So we designed the school outreach program to encourage translators and interpreters to get out into schools and universities and tell kids about careers in translation and interpreting. I participated in it myself. I went to my daughter's high school uh, to, do, you know, to talk to high school students uh, fairly recently. Talking to you know 17 year olds is it's is a challenge, uh, but it was rewarding. You sort of get nervous ahead of time. At least I always do, and I think a lot of people do. But um, it's very exciting. I go in with about three dozen other local businessmen, and we take turns in different middle schools talking to eighth grades. Some days you realize that the only reason they're even making it to your table is that the army is next door and they've got all these toys out on the table and a big bucket of candy. And after they did a circuit of the, all the different job opportunities and careers, they had to go back and pick three. And that's how we knew we had done more than just stand next to the army with the candy bowl. I went on short notice right after the ATA conference was speaking to eight and nine year olds and had to put a presentation together sort of at the last minute. And then when I showed up, I found that I'd been double booked and I had half the amount of time. And in the Washington area, I was sharing the slot with a secret service agent, which is the ultimate cool Washington job and the ultimate tough act to follow. And I thought, oh my gosh, they'll never know that I was here. They will never remember me. She had her Kevlar vest, she had little plastic uh, badges to give the kids. I went and the kids really were fascinated. I mean, the teacher said, show us where France is when I told them that I worked with clients in France. We pulled a map down and I showed them and I said, it's so far away that right now in France it's four o'clock in the afternoon and an audible gasp went up. I mean, they really were interested and it was, it was a terrific experience. My favorite was during the question and answer period when one of the little girls said, um, you said you had your office in the basement and I said, yes, I do. And she said, um, do you ever get scared down there? And um, it was a great moment, and I said very honestly that usually not, but sometimes when my husband was asleep. I always come out feeling energized and feeling really great about the profession, no matter how many annoying phone calls I've had that week or hard deadlines that I've had to meet. And I've had so many people in ATA come and tell me, I just did my first school outreach, and it was so much fun. It's wonderful to see kids suddenly looking at being bilingual as an asset, they realize, wow, I've really got a powerful tool here. And it's, it's really wonderful to see kids realizing, wow, you know, I, I love this and I could really do something with it.